When you're a fat guy in junior high, you have three choices. Be a bully, be silent, be funny. I tackled this multiple choice quickly. I never wanted to inspire violence, so I crossed off bully. I enjoyed moments of silence, but biting my tongue always left a sour taste in my mouth. So I chose C. Rolling with my rolls to the husky path of just want to make them laugh. I deflected attention away from my chubby cheeks to jokes on cafeteria chicken nuggets that tasted like postage stamps. But all around me, I saw my fellow fat kids face bullies who get kicks out of curb stomping self-esteem. You know these bullies, these angry mouthed losers who can't wait for their nails to clench into palms. They grow up to be bad boyfriends, abusive husbands, and mere ghosts of decent humanity. And on the other side of their knuckles were these timid, heavily husky boys facing a bruising barrage of insults hourly, daily, weekly. They ate their lunch in bathroom stalls. They skipped out on field trips to avoid getting rolled off school property. When I saw these attacks, I froze. I became a chalk outline of opportunity. Maybe I was afraid. Maybe I secretly wanted these kids to face that, the violence that could have swung my way any moment. These attacks burst before me like pumpkins smashed by brainless boots. Being powerless at 13 is like having a stroke at 70. You see yourself weakening, the fog of pain drenching your good sense, and the eyes pepper with shock. And then the horse blinders pop up. And all I can do with that schoolyard was walk on, forget about it, turbo my waddle around eager fists. One time, I remember seeing Charles face a hailstorm of snowballs from four tough kids with nothing better to do. I jogged around his weeping body like it was a small fire I had to avoid. It was one of the worst decisions I ever made in my life. See, I wanted to be the funny kid. And I was, but I gave myself the non-refundable gift of cowardice. I shouted away from my double chin, my double chin brethren who could have been me, headlock between muscles, tears streaming down cheeks. You might be wondering, what could I have done? Heck, I'm no fighter. The last time I swung my fist was against my friend's punching bag. And even then I asked him, is it okay? Are, are you sure, is this, is this cool? But I like to think I could have done something to join in solidarity with my big bone brothers. Even if it was just an anonymous tip to a teacher or principal. I've always believed it's better to regret something you did than something you didn't do. And I wouldn't regret breaking the shins of bullies so they couldn't stand up to fight back. Instead of drowning in guilt, I'm saying this to those that have not seen the fat kicked out of kids to realize what goes on beyond a teacher's radar. There's only so much we can do, that's true. But if we don't take action out of laziness or apathy, we deserve bloody noses that never stop hemorrhaging. See, I don't regret that I grew up as a fat guy in junior high. I just hope someone could say the words I swallowed out of fear.